It may not be a sin, but sin could be the cause of it. I was recently asked a question. I want to give a little more thought to it because it's something that all of us at some point in time in our lives have experienced, maybe even will experience or are experiencing. And that is when you have these ungodly thoughts or dreams while you're sleeping. Is that a problem? Is that a sin? Is it a sin? Does God hold us accountable? Is God angry with us? How would God treat us if in our dreams there's something that's ungodly, that is sinful, that is occurring in the dreams? Well, a couple things. The, the dreams, the thoughts in and of themselves aren't necessarily a bad thing or a sinful thing. Now, they can lead to sin. The bigger question, though, is how they got there. And then two, how long will they stay there? And then three, more importantly, will they cause you to do something after that? Whatever's in your mind, whatever the dream is, whatever it is in your in, inside of you comes from somewhere. Now, there are really only two sources. One, God to the world. And when I say the world, it can be necessarily a good thing or it could be a bad thing. So let's just deal with God first. If God is speaking to a person, if some, some thoughts come to a person's mind because of, let's say, he's been reading the Bible, uh, that, that maybe the spirit is moving in a person and just godly thoughts are there. That's a good thing. Now, there are going to be some that are going to say that that these are something that you should, that God is wanting you to do to move on those things. I want to address those things because if it's from God, well, then amen. Uh, and we'll just let, let the Lord move you however he wants to move you or let you determine that. But if it's from the world, and that's kind of the, the whole point of this conversation, if it's from the world, it can be something just kind of, you know, not that big a deal. Maybe you saw a, a, a show, maybe you saw uh, the Avengers, or you saw some show and now that kind of those thoughts are in your head or nothing, nothing too harmful. But what if it's something that is bad? Someone is getting hurt or someone is doing something, um, you know, evil or there's some lustful thoughts or what have you. The question is, where do they come from? Well, again, the world, it is from things that you've seen, the things that you've heard, the things that you've been around. Uh, the enemy wants you to have negative thoughts. The enemy wants you to have lustful thoughts. The evil, the enemy wants you to have evil thoughts. And so there's a couple passages that I think are, are important. A couple things. First of all, if you've got some sort of ungodly thoughts, remember, you can control those things. You are in control. You are, realistic, as we say, uh, you are the boss of you to some degree. You belong to Christ, but you do have some control. Remember, the Bible says this. Paul says this, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And so there is something, if we are believer, there is something about us innately uh, that is connected to the Lord. And so what we can do if we do have the mind of Christ, meaning that we are born of God. And so let's go to Philippians 4. He says, 4.4, 4, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Make your mind, make your focus be on him. You'll see why. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. So notice what he says. The peace of God, that will guard you. Well, how do you how do you ensure that the peace of God will guard your heart, guard your mind? And so, well, first verse eight kind of helps with that. He says, finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise dwell on these things. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Notice there's not a whole lot of discussions in the Bible about uh, stopping the enemy or anything negative from going to your mind. There's only a few. There's only a few solutions. There are a few verses that talk about this. Why? Because they're pretty straightforward. What you focus on, what goes in your mind is what ultimately is going to come out. Remember, Jesus makes a statement and he's speaking about words, but it's not just the words he says, but the things that proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and those defile the man. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witnesses, slanders. These are the things which defile the man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile the man. So the conversation that Jesus was having was, was that these ritualistic things such as not washing your hands that would defile a man? No, he says what defiles a man is what proceeds from the heart. And when we use the word heart, whether it be the Hebrew word for heart, uh, lev, or the Greek word for heart, cardia, he's speaking not of the organ, 
but really of the inner man. And so that what's in there is ultimately going to come out, even whether it's in your mouth that it comes out of uh, your hands, your eyes, your heart is going to control what you do. And so you want to control what's in there. So it could be something simple, such as not watching some certain things, not listening to certain songs or not being around certain people. And what do you do? You replace those things with with good thoughts, thoughts, godly thoughts. For some people, that'll be hard to stay away from certain people, but that might be the best thing for you to do. You don't want to find yourself engulfed in some sort of sinful situation or thoughts. You hear someone talking about something, you're watching movies, and in the movies there's all these different uh, debased things that are happening. You listen to certain songs because what goes in you is ultimately going to come out of you. The old saying, garbage in, garbage out, we'll put the good stuff in. And so that good stuff will come out. James also gives a warning. He says this in James chapter one, verse 13. He says, let no one say that when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God for God cannot be tempted by evil. And he himself does not tempt anyone. So God is not, obviously we know that these thoughts aren't coming from God, but each one is tempted, look what he says, when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. So this is coming from you. When you do these things, they're coming from you. And when your mind is at rest, when it's at its most vulnerable state, uh, now think about it. When you're sleeping, uh, you have all these different thoughts. And sometimes these thoughts might, you might wake up with these exact same thoughts, especially if they're reoccurring and they can lead to sin. He says, then when lust has conceived, Obviously, in the mind, it gives birth to sin. And then when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. And so you want to make sure that it's not being kind of incubated in the mind. And so if you're having these thoughts, I wouldn't be too alarmed unless they're continual. Uh, you, you're constantly having these thoughts and then you're all then you're also having uh, the thought or the maybe the desire to maybe act on some of these thoughts. Don't let these sinful thoughts sit there. They'll sit there. They will kind of stew, uh, they'll incubate, they'll grow, and then you'll think about doing these things. And you may even say, you know what, I'm not going to do that thing, but just give me, just, let me just think about it. Well, no, don't even do that. You want to replace your mind, in your mind, the bad thoughts with good thoughts. And as Paul says in Philippians, think on the godly things. Rest your mind in the word. Read. Praise God. Listen to music. Godly music. Be around godly people. Listen to sermons. Put your mind, your focus on the things of God. Set your mind on the things above. That way, the things below, the things on earth don't permeate your mind and then come out and show up in sin. Because think about it. Every sin that you've done, you did not originate that. You saw it or you heard it somewhere else. And where else it was did not come from God. And so I would say it's not necessarily a sinful thing, but the source of these um, bad thoughts or ungodly feelings and so forth come from a sinful location and it can become sin if you don't deal with it. And it's an easy solution. Just simply replace those thoughts with, as Paul says, with godly thoughts. Amen. Amen.